Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Brave Purpose Podcast. My name is Anissa O. Wesley, and I am your host. If you've been joining me for season two of Brave Purpose, you know I've been bringing on a whole bunch of of talented people, of people who are walking in their purpose, and I wanted them to come on to encourage you all to continue to live bravely. So today, I have a very special guest who I've known for a long, long time, <laughs> and I just want to introduce her to you. Her name is Brittany, and I'll let her tell you a little bit more about what she does and who she is, but I'm excited to have her on. So without further ado, um, Britt, hello. Hi. Hi, Britt. What's Hi, going on Britt. with you? Thank you for having me. Of course. Thank you for saying yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Absolutely. but if you would take a moment to introduce yourself to um, the people who are watching. Uh, my name is Brittany Cooper and I am a writer, director, content creator, um, actress. Um, and I am very, very excited to be here with you. Awesome. She's so modest. <laughs> so she's a very talented, all of the above, she says. And um, I'm wondering, Brittany, how long have you been doing, um, like, how, how long have you been in kind of like the creative arts? Since I can remember. Like, I... I... I don't have, I can't pinpoint a time when I started acting. That was something that I was doing alone in my room as a kid. Um, as far as writing goes, I can remember as a child, and I don't remember the exact age, I would see TV shows and I didn't like the way it ended and I would rewrite it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, um, really? <laughs> yeah, so I was like, I don't like the way that ended. So I would just, rewrite it how I would have wanted to wanted it to end. Um, and I was in plays in school. Church was a place where I was really allowed to um, hone and develop my gifts. Um, I was able to freely um, do monologues and write my own. I wrote my fir uh, first stage play called Choices. Uh, with my church where it's in the church of los angeles so my pastors were very um influential in allowing me to use my gifts to serve in church which really helped me hone my confidence in my skill set um because i wasn't really doing it anywhere else i was in plays in school up until like junior high and then in high school i wasn't really doing anything um outside of uh, church as far as writing and acting and things of that nature so church really developed that um, confidence in my skills. And then from there, um, I went to school. I went to Loyola Marymount University. I majored in screenwriting. Mm -hmm. But then once I got my degree in screenwriting, I wasn't really um, doing anything with that. I just, you know, all of my jobs kind of revolved around entertainment, but they, a lot of them were like administrative work. So I wasn't doing anything creative. Um, and then I created like a YouTube page where I was doing like some short films. You were actually a part of one of uh, our projects that I did uh, um, surrounding uh, self-image in Black women. And so you were interviewed in that. And then I had a short film uh, for that as well in, I believe, 2017. And so I did some things here and there. Um, I also did a project um, in 2020 surrounding the killings of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. And so um, all that to say, I was doing things here and there and putting some projects out on my um, YouTube, but I wasn't really doing anything on social media, even though my name on social media was Brit the Storyteller. I wasn't putting out any content. So I would mm -hmm. randomly put out a random skit and then I would take it down because I didn't like the way I looked at it. I was very um, much focused on how I was, how I looked in them, and I, I just didn't feel 
good or confident about myself. And so I would put something on for a while and then I would just take it down. So I didn't have any content on my page. And then last year, um, I was like, I'm going to start putting out content on my page because this is a platform in which I have control over um, what I am exposing to people. And so I was like, why not? Like I started to feel like I was sitting on um, my acting and I was like, you know, before I die, not that I plan to die anytime soon, <laughs> but before, <laughs> so, before my life is over, I want to give this a try because I do mm -hmm. feel like it is a gift from God. And mm -hmm. so, and, and I've never like seriously tried it. And so I was like, um, I was asking around about like auditions and things like that. And I was like, you know what, let me use my social media platform and just showcase that I act. And so mm -hmm. I started doing like just these skits and there was stuff that were just scenarios that were relatable and funny to me. And then the ones Hilarious. that started, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> the ones that really started taking off surprisingly because that wasn't the plan, but I would literally just do skits about my mom. And these are literally scenarios, like stuff my mom says, stuff that I find hilarious, me and my sister laugh at or whatever the case may be. And so, and stuff that my mom laughs at herself. Like she knows, <laughs> like, so um, I started, and those skits resonated with so many people of all races who are, who are like, I mean, like people from Israel, like every, like who will DM me and be like, this is my mom. Like this is like, <laughs> and so like it, it resonated um, across the board, across cultures, which was shocking to me because I really thought, you know, it was just going to be more black people who related to it, but like everybody related to it. So wow. it was pretty cool. Um, and it took, the, the more I did it, the, the fear dissipated because initially I was very, very nervous. Um, and it took me a long time to shoot the videos. And now I've gotten the swing of it because I've been consistent. And this is kind of the first time in my life, I would say, where I have really been consistent with something. I started July of last year and I have put out skits every day or every other day since July of last year. And the following on my social media went from a hundred and something followers to almost 20 K. Woo. <laughs> so, um, I learned that consistency really does pay off. Mm -hmm. um, I learned that if you do it when you're afraid, the fear will dissipate. Like if you face it, mm -hmm. the fear will leave. So I'm not afraid to do it anymore. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't, I don't keep going. <laughs> you have more. Questions. Wow! No. <laughs> no, that was great. That's why I'm like, yeah, keep going because <laughs> because one, I think the things you touched on, um, like how you would put out uh, content, because I've always known you were talented. Because every time I saw you do something, even at church or you know at another event, I would be like wow how does she how does that even in there you know like how are you doing this and i was always thinking like i really want her to like utilize her talents like and i feel like even you like posting stuff and then taking it off i don't even think i noticed that you were posting and taking it off right and so like, I've only noticed when you've actually posted it and like, you know, because I'll see it because I follow you. And so it's so interesting that you were having so much um, like insecurity or fear around the way that you looked. And now since you've been consistent and you've kind of just pressed through the fears that you were having, which is what I was hearing you say, like you were just like, you know what, forget it. I'm going to just go for it. Yes. And, and it wasn't just the fear as far as like looks because, because social media is such a place where people are always made up they always look their best they always look beautiful their hair is always just right mm -hmm. and i was i just didn't feel good enough i was constantly comparing myself to the images i saw of other women on social media and mm -hmm. i felt ugly and i was just like i don't want to put this out there or i don't want to keep this on my page i just wanted to put these perfectly crafted selfie selfies on my page where I felt like I looked, you know, perfect or mm -hmm. close to it. Um, but I didn't want, you know, to keep, 
you know, those those skits and those videos up because of that. And then also because I was comparing the content and was like, is it funny? It's funny to me. Is it going to be funny to other people? And um, I noticed that it wasn't until I had, you know, some people who followed me who who consistently liked my content, but it wasn't until um, I made my page public. Mm. And I allowed other people to see it that I actually started getting more of the views and, and the likes because the people who I actually knew weren't really liking the content. And mm -hmm. so it was discouraging because it was like, I'm not doing all this work, shooting this, editing this, changing outfits for eight likes. So I'm like, if people aren't liking it, if it's not resonating, if it's not funny to people, why am I mm -hmm. doing it? Um, mm -hmm. And so I also had to learn to trust my voice and what's funny to me mm -hmm. um, because the algorithm and all of that fluctuates, you never know, but it's like, you just have to do what's true to you. Right. So I was like, this is funny to me. This is real life. This resonates with me. I'm going to put it out there. And then let the chips fall where they may. And that's still something now because you just mm -hmm. never know the likes and views they fluctuate so mm -hmm. i was gonna say that because i was like you can post something super amazing and it still not get the amount of you know what I think traction is like the videos i be cracking up at and i'm like <laughs> oh this is funny you put that up it gets a certain amount of likes and then once i'm like eh those are the ones that get and i'm just mm -hmm. like <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and i i think that speaks to like you're your biggest critic because <laughs> you just kind of let go and we're like whatever i'm about to just post and be consistent you were more so um it sounds to me like you were more so focused on consistency absolutely you were like i'm gonna try it and I'm then because you hadn't really given yourself a full shot and i think that's so valuable because like so many people don't even give themselves a shot right because they're so focused on what other people think or they're comparing their type of funny to somebody else's type of funny or their type of content to somebody else's and it's like well you haven't even give yourself a full you haven't even given yourself a full shot right. and so like i mean you know as believers i don't think that we should put our value in the amount of views and likes that we get because like you said it fluctuates and if Absolutely. that fluctuates then that means the way we feel about ourselves fluctuate. But I think it is amazing that you kind of proved yourself wrong in the sense that you thought nobody was going to like it or you thought you weren't cute enough or whatever the case was com in comparison to whatever you were seeing. And right. it's like, people are actually like, no, this is dope. Like, you're hilarious and following you from all over the world and you're making them laugh. Like, I think that's wonderful. <laughs> so congratulations. It's, 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 it's unbelievable because, yeah, like I said, like I only really did things in church because mm -hmm. it was that was my safe place. It was like I felt comfortable to um, express myself creatively in church. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, coming to social media, people are mean for no reason, they're cool for no reason. Mm -hmm. um, people will say whatever comes to their mind behind the screen. And so it's like you're nervous to put because you literally are putting yourself out there with people you do not know. And strangers yeah. have no um, filter. <laughs> so mm -hmm. they'll, you know, like if if they don't like something, people don't understand the idea of just scrolling past it. Sometimes people want to like comment on things just to be negative. Yeah. And so it's it can be scary and intimidating, especially since I didn't even want to make my page public. I talked right. to my cousin and my cousin was like, um <laughs> do you want people to see the content or not? He was like, you have to keep it public. I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm private. I don't want people all over my like and he was like, you're gonna have to get over that. Like if you mm -hmm. want to see if you want it to spread, if you want, you're gonna have to make it public. Like, yeah. okay. So that was even uncomfortable. A lot of it took me out of my comfort zone. I don't like to be in front of the camera. I prefer to be behind the camera. So as mm -hmm. a writer and director, I'm in my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. It's like um, being in front of the camera can be intimidating because I'm constantly critiquing myself. And so I'm like, so it was all very, very, um, uh, it was me stepping out of my comfort zone. 
Um, yeah. But I'm so glad that I did. Yeah, I'm glad that you did too, because I'd be cracking up every day. <laughs> and what's crazy is my lane has always been drama. Like any mm -hmm. sports films, anything I've done, as you know, like church, a lot of stuff I did is drama. Yeah. So it was like to do like funny videos. It's like, oh, I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> like, you know, I just, you never know. I'm just kind of flowing with it now because I'm like, all right. I don't know where it's going to lead, but it's like, um, but I'm doing it. I'm enjoying it. And now, like, I get these comments from people that I never would have imagined receiving. A lot of people who have lost their mothers mm -hmm. um, comment on my mom's skits. Mm -hmm. And they're always like, I miss my mom so much, but these skits, like, bring me joy. Aww. Or they skit me smile. Or mm -hmm. they think of my mom. And so, um, just you end up helping people in ways that you never even envisioned or thought. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. Man, that's deep. Like you're literally helping people overcome or like get through their grief, like of their mother. So um, without that being said, I want to ask you, what do you think your God-given purpose is? I think my God-given purpose is to use the gifts God has given me creatively, which I think encompass acting, writing, directing, um, creating content to impact people's hearts, to evoke emotions, and to hopefully change people's lives for the better. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's good. And to use them creatively. Like, so I've always just... been a creative person. Mm -hmm. Like, I've always loved acting. Or I, I've always loved expressing myself creatively. So, I always mm -hmm. loved acting, um, writing. Um, I finally embraced it and finally started calling myself a writer last year. I was, even though like I majored in screenwriting, I wasn't really writing. Um, mm. And it was the one thing that I kept avoiding and running from. Really? Um, because it's hard. It's not easy. Like acting comes easier for me than the writing. Mm. And so acting was something that just kind of came naturally. And while writing came naturally, it's um, it's still a skill set that you have to hone. And mm -hmm. it's, it can be very tedious. And um, it comes to you when it comes to you. You can't force it. Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, with writing, um, you know, how people say they have writer's block and all that. Like sometimes the creative juices aren't flowing. The story isn't flowing. And so it, it's always been challenging. Yeah, it's just been a fear of mine. It's just been something that I've been trying to avoid. But mm -hmm. um, I remember a word that I have held on to is that I was in church one Sunday many, many years ago. And there was a guest speaker who came who did not know me. And he um, touched my hands and prophesied that you have the hands of a ready writer. And so that word I'm like, okay, even though I've kind of like <laughs> not the edge. <laughs> it just came out like. <laughs> so even though I had that word, I was still running from it. And so I have my family who is constantly in my ear. Why are you not writing? Why are you not writing? You you need to be writing. You need to be writing. And I'm like, Ugh. and so and friends who constantly encourage me and all of that, but. I did not believe in myself. I was like, my writing, it's not good enough. It's not, you know, I was just constantly, or I would see like a film and story and be like, how did they come up with that? I, I could never come up with that. Like, and so all this stuff, like just fighting me. Um, and I just, so the first step was calling myself a writer, which was not something that I've ever done before. So mm -hmm. people ask me, what do you do? I'm a writer. And that, that, Took a, that took me out of my comfort zone. Mm. By then, people expect you to be right. <laughs> if you call yourself right, you better be right. So, um, so yeah. I don't yeah. know what the question was or if I answered it, but. <laughs> You did. You you did. I said, what was your God-given purpose? And you gave a very good answer, but then you went into writing. 
and how you had to overcome the fear of even being calling yourself that. So, I mean, that is so like relatable in the sense that the thing that we're the best at, like the enemy always trying to make us feel like we're not good at it. And I think, I think that's such a big um, thing for us to to kind of remember when we're looking at purpose because it's not always the thing that you're the most comfortable doing but it all goes back to what you said like you're creatively using your gifts to help people's lives be better or change their lives for the better and literally everything that you're saying about you overcoming your fears you um, stepping out and being consistent, you calling yourself a writer, which you have always been. And everybody can see it but you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and you're literally doing that. So, I mean, I see it. <laughs> so, you know, that's huge. Like, I'm really, um, like, I'm proud of you. I'm proud to know you. And I'm proud of you for for taking those steps, like privately and now publicly, um, to literally live a life and a purpose that you feel called to. Absolutely, absolutely. But I think the fear of, at the end of it all, when it's all said and done, facing God and saying, and Him asking me, "What did you do with the gifts I gave you?" The fear of what I would have to say to Him if I didn't try <laughs> um, that outweighed the fear of what people think or or just my own insecurities or whatever the case may be or the fear of stepping out of my comfort zone it's like ultimately i'm gonna have to face god at the end of it all and i i don't want to be like the servant who hid their talents yeah um, so i just i'm like i, I don't and i know the stories that are in my heart are needed for people because they're about, um, they're about healing. They're about forgiveness. They're about relationships. Mm -hmm. And it's like people it's for somebody like the first play stage play that I wrote, I, um, there was a girl who came up to me, um, who had lost her brother and she Mm -hmm. was crying. Um, and she was just saying like how, you know, her relationship with God was strained because of that. And I was able to like lead her to salvation um, Mm. after my play. And and so I'm like, even if it touches one person, it's well worth it. Mm -hmm. And that's what means, that's what means the most to me and gives me the most uh, gratification is when um, people tell me how something that I wrote or, or something that I acted out it ministered to them, it blessed them, and brought healing to them. Um, that that means the world to me. It, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's beautiful, and I think the reason why God has allowed you to reach success and to be blossoming and blooming in this season is because of your heart posture to want to help and heal people. And I think that's a a good place to be I think it's a place we always have to go back to as well like remembering why you're doing doing what you're doing um really with social media mm-hmm. why that's important is because you get caught up in the likes yeah caught up in the follows and it'll um and you'll miss or forget the purpose that has to constantly be in my mind why am I doing this what is right. the purpose of this mm-hmm. um, and not just focusing on oh well this one got this many likes and this one didn't so this m- must not have been as funny or blah 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 or trying to figure all of that out it'll mm-hmm. have your feelings your confidence fluctuating because you know, you'll be like oh well maybe I'm not as funny it didn't get as many likes or you know so it just I have to constantly remind myself not to get caught up in how many likes, how many whatever, put out the content and let it be what it's going to be. Yeah. And yeah. remember the purpose. Like, mm-hmm. and I'm constantly checking my heart on what is my purpose for doing this? Like, why am I putting content out there? Um, mm-hmm. That's important too. Because sometimes you can just start doing stuff and you enjoy there's a high that comes from that gratification of likes and comments mm-hmm. and people engaging with your stuff. 
And yeah. it's like, that's something I have to be careful with too. Mm-hmm. Wake up. Let me see how many likes is on that one. Go to sleep. <laughs> let me see. You know, constantly mm-hmm. on there. And it's like, I have to constantly check my heart on that. How do you do that? Like, how do you balance um, enjoying, you know, that you're growing, but also keeping a balance in mind of not allowing that to define you? Um, I haven't, um, I'm not, I don't think I'm at the point where I'm fully balancing it, mm-hmm. but I do know, I'm a, but I'm self-aware. Okay. So, I know when it starts affecting, affecting my emotions. Mm. And I'm like, oh, let me put this down. So it's like if a certain amount of likes, you know, if I don't get a certain amount of likes on a post that I thought was like, oh, I thought this was a really good one and didn't, and didn't get a certain amount of likes and I feel like my um, emotions dropping or I'm getting sad about it, I'm like, oh, okay. I, like I'm self-aware. Like, I'm, okay. I, I'm, so I'm, I haven't arrived at <laughs> The ability to fully balance, like balance it, but I am aware enough to at least I know when my emo when it's causing my emotions to fluctuate. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, um, I probably need to put the phone down. Or I probably need to remember, or like remember, why are you really doing this? Okay. Because if it continue, like if it's gonna be that, then I'm not gonna do it because it's not worth that. It's not worth you know like. Uh, me feeling like it's um, likes determine my self worth or um, or my talent. Yeah. Like, I get this amount of likes. I'm not. Maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm not talented enough. Maybe the content isn't. Whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. So because the likes can absolutely affect how you feel about yourself. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Speaking for myself. Right. Um, so I'm like, okay, I get that. I get this be aware of that and check that. Yeah. Okay. That's a daily thing. Okay. That's real. Thank you for being honest about that, that it's not necessarily something that you've um, figured out fully, because this is pretty new. You just started in July of last year. It's only been... Girl, I was just yesterday. I... <laughs> and I was like, this thing not get done. I mean, I thought it was funny. <laughs> with feeling like okay am i only funny when i'm portraying my mom because <laughs> like those are the videos that are getting like all the you know like then yeah I'm, like, I'm trying to also incorporate other videos other types of videos where people tend to resonate more with you know the mom one so i'm like is this the only time i'm you know it's working so um you know yeah. all kind of stuff goes through my mind but i'm like but i'm gonna keep doing it and i'm gonna keep putting out what i want like yes. and not focusing on like oh well i think this is what people know if it's funny to me if it's relatable to me you know but i make it a point you know there are certain things that i'm like um that i make it a point for my content and like that um and one of those things is i try to make it something that everyone can see so i don't uh, I don't curse in my in my content, mm-hmm. um, so I try to do things where it's like if kids watch it, if if your grandparents watch it, like all generations can watch it and yeah. laugh and not mm-hmm. feel like oh this is you know, you know inappropriate for me or this is too much for me or whatever the case may be. So I try to I try to um, not try, but that's just something that I do you know, for my content, because there's a lot of things out there, a lot of different types of content. So we want to have options. So yeah. I'd like mine to be an option of which people don't have to feel guilty about, you know, watching it. If they're watching it in front of their kids, if they're watching it at home, if you watch yeah. it at church, wherever you're watching it, like you can watch it. All the generations can laugh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, excuse me. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> But that's good. I think it's um, I think it's very important to have that kind of content because it's not a lot of that, mm-hmm. right? And I love that you're posting what you think is good, and you're not allowing like this is literally your creative outlet. It sounds like it just so happens that you're creating content and you're sharing it with the world, mm-hmm. and so the way that you've made it kind of like it, I thought it was funny. You know, so whatever. Like, if I laugh while I'm 
love mm-hmm. that. And that's another thing. Like I have learned so many skill sets in doing these skits. So I'm acting, I used to, when I first started posting skits, I would ask my cousin or I would ask um, a friend, uh, William from our church. Mm-hmm. Uh, from, uh, from yeah, yeah. Church. I would ask them to edit them for me. Mm. So now, but then I was like, I can't wait on other people when they have time to edit. So yeah. I learned to edit my own videos. So I edit them, I add the music, I do all of it now. And so I can fully um, capture my vision because I'm mm-hmm. doing all of it. And oh, so wow. that's pretty cool. So it's like how I've been able to, you know, like grow some new skill sets as well, adding music and finding little tricks and trades to like, add voiceover so i record my voice and then add that file in and then you know so i'm just i'm having fun with it good and that's that's what it's about i think anytime you're creating content anytime you're doing anything like you have to have fun because if (laughs) if you stop having fun and it becomes like a dread then you know again we're going back to why are we even doing this because now it's affecting your mental health right so I think that's great that you found kind of like new skills. You're like, I'm going to do this my own. (laughs) And, (laughs) you know, I'm sure William did a great job. but (laughs) He did. Him and my cousin, they edited my videos for me and they did a great job. But then people get busy. Yeah. They'd be like, oh, okay, I'll get you when I can. Or, you know, Mm -hmm. oh, no, I want to do this now. So I still have to learn how to do this myself. Yeah. You got to plan your content out, you know, like, and so you're not stressed. (laughs) So. But I I love that. And I'm glad that you're learning. I'm learning too. As you see, I'm doing a podcast and putting myself out there as well. It is a journey. But (laughs) but, you've always been like, I don't want to say shy because I don't know if you've been shy, but you've always been kind of like a quiet, you know, like, so it's like to see you putting yourself out there in front of the camera and all of that. Is that like, was that out of your comfort zone? Because I feel like you were always kind of like a behind the scenes, quiet, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think in the beginning it was out of my comfort zone, but then when I started to realize that this is a part of who God created me to be and I have a voice that matters and that a lot of people resonate with, then, you know, again, as like you were saying, as you show up, you become more comfortable with it. Do I have days? Like even coming on here, I was trying to fix the mic thing. Right? <laughs> so I have days when I'm like, this doesn't look right or whatever. But I've kind of gotten over it. And yes. to the point where I'm like, um, I'm going to show up regardless of what people think about me. And exactly. people still have that thought of me that I was shy. And I'm like, I was never shy. I just didn't like people. So... <laughs> Or like, you know, like I would be more open and um, whatever with people that I was friends with or, you know, who I was comfortable with. Um, um, Yeah. That was (laughs) great for the I just didn't like people. (laughs) Not like certain people, but, you know, I just wasn't like. Um, I had a lot of like social anxiety Mm -hmm. and so I think that that hindered me from actually fully being myself and so I think that as I've grown and developed and you know had so many different seasons in life and um, you know kind of coming back to God building my confidence then now it's kind of like well either you're going to be who God's called you to be or you're going to allow the faces of men to make you be stuck in fear and I'm like I refuse um, to allow fear to hinder me from anything that God has for me. So, um, so yeah. And I think I think people still think I'm like people call me like quiet and things like that. And I'm like, I don't think I'm quiet. My voice is low, <laughs> but I have you know like I I have a lot to say when I when I do. And um, so I I don't think that I think the perception is of me. Like I don't know what people's perception is of me as I, as I was um from a young child, but as I've grown, I I hope the perception can change, and you know, because I think I don't know if you had that either, where 
um, as a child, people have a certain perspective of you mm-hmm. or an image of you, and then you grow, and they can't get that image out of their head. You're just still little Brit, you know, or you're just still little Nisa or whatever. And so I think that I have to get over what people think and yeah. just, yeah. just um, do it like I'm doing now. So I would say that's the been one of the biggest hurdles for me. Well, the two biggest hurdles, getting over what people think, mm-hmm. but I think the biggest hurdle has been getting over my own negative self-talk. Because for so mm-hmm. long, I've been telling myself, I'm I'm not good enough. I can't do it. Mm-hmm. Um, either me or the enemy telling me that. Either way, I've had right. my thoughts of just not being good enough. Mm-hmm. And so just not even giving things, giving things a try because... I've already made up in my mind that I'm not I'm not good enough because I'm comparing myself. Yeah. Um, so that has been the biggest hurdle for me to um, to overcome. Yeah, I mean, but it sounds like you're overcoming it every day and getting better and bolder and you know just more polished every day. So. Mm-hmm. Congratulations to you for for doing your thing, like for real. And I'm figuring it out. I'm like, I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't really know what. <laughs> you know, None of kinda... us do. None of us do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't have like this idea of like, oh, the plan for this is blah blah blah. It's like, no, I'm just doing it. I'm just stepping mm-hmm. out of my comfort zone, taking one foot in front of the other, just putting out content. Okay. That I, you know, that I feel comfortable uh, with putting out, mm-hmm. um, and then you know, yeah. then what happens from there? Good. I mean, I have one last question for you. You might have answered it already, but I'm gonna put you on by yourself so you can talk to the people. But what would be your encouragement to someone um, who might be struggling to like live out? their purpose um my encouragement to someone who is struggling to live out their purpose would be to put one foot in front of the other just make the choice make the decision to do whatever it is you feel like god is calling you to do and i find that sometimes what we allow to hinder us is this thought that I don't have all my ducks in a row. I don't have everything. I don't have, you know, for me, you know, oh, I don't have this equipment. I don't have this. I don't have that. Use what you have. I have learned, like, everything I shoot is on my little iPhone. I don't have a special camera. Um, everything I edit is iMovie on my iPhone. Like, I don't have a special editing equipment, anything like that. So I'm learning to use what you have. And when you do that, God will multiply, um, he will continue to multiply what you have. So um, my encouragement would be just start, like you will never feel ready. So it's like, if you wait until you feel like you're ready to do it, you will never do it. So my encouragement would be to do it, even though you're scared, um, put one foot in front of the other, use what you have, um, Sometimes we don't have it all all figured out. I don't think we ever have it all figured out. Um, the path may not be clear. You might you may not have a clear vision of exactly um, where you're going, but just you know, let God lead you on that first step. Take that first step or leap of faith um, and go for it. And as you go, you will feel more and more comfortable. And I can honestly um, say that that's true for me. I was extremely nervous, um, self-doubting, self-critiquing, all of that, self-conscious. But the more you do it, the more comfortable you are um, and confident you are in your skill set, in your ability, and in your gift. That's good. Thank you for that encouragement. I mean, <laughs> it, um, it's so interesting because, you know, I think that's one thing I hear from 
many people is to start before you feel ready. Like there's never going to be a chance, a time when you feel ready. So just do it and you'll learn along the way. And even hearing your story about, you know, how you've been kind of just learning along the way. That's so true. And same, same for me. And, you know, I think it's encouraging to know that, you know, we're not alone in this journey of, of yes. figuring things and out. Have, like God places, God has placed friends who who know things, who have like given me tips on editing. Like my friend Candice has been very instrumental. Like she did a whole TikTok training with me over FaceTime. <laughs> like um, she has encouraged me from the moment I was putting out content. She has helped me with like editing tips. Like, hey, here's an idea. Don't fade here. Do this. Um, you can do this. Like she is just so. It's like God will. And then God has sent me all these messages from people who have just encouraged me, DM'd me. I see what you're doing. Keep going. Like just incur or text messages. Yeah. So it's like, um he'll send but it's like I, i'm learning because i'm the type of person i like to see it before i move and god just doesn't work like that so it's like you're gonna have to do it and then he's gonna provide the app <laughs> then he'll provide mm -hmm. once you move but it's like i'll be wanting him show me everything and then i move and he he don't work like that so it's yeah. like once i start just i'm just gonna do it and i'm like i don't know what i'm doing but whatever and then, like, it just started all coming together. And my friend um, messaged me, and literally her words were, like, I'm so proud of you. You used what you had, and like, look what you're doing. And wow. so, like, yeah. It, That's beautiful. So. Yeah. Well, Britt, thank you for being here today and for sharing your heart and your encouragement and you know, just being true to where you are right now. Um, I think that that speaks volumes and that um, encourages me and everybody that's watching, I'm sure. <laughs> so, I'm always encouraged by your posts and, um, you know, your messages and how bold, boldly you proclaim your faith and, um, and uh, the word of God and you know, how you are boldly living out your life for God and, you know, walking in your purpose. Um, very encouraging to me. So, Thank you. I appreciate that. And, you know, praise God. I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> I'll never know what to say. <laughs> but It's so awkward when people encourage me. Because like, I have to be encouraging people and then I don't know how to receive it. So. <laughs> I'm working, I'm working on it, but But thank you, right? And I'd be like, you know. Anyway, hopefully you can hear that. Um, but I want you to I want you to tell the people where they can find you and you know, um, that kind of thing. Like how how can they connect with you? Okay, this is so bad because I can't remember if my handle on Instagram is Brit underscore the storyteller or Brit dot the storyteller. Um, but it's I think Brit it's underscore. Okay, Brit underscore <laughs> the storyteller um, mm -hmm. on Instagram, and then I am Brit the storyteller on TikTok as well. Okay, and I will I'll write it in too if I'm if I'm wrong, <laughs> I'll just write it in. But yeah, thank you for being with me today i'm gonna close us out and yeah but thank you all for listening to brit let me see how i um and thank you for joining me for the brave purpose podcast once again i hope that this in some way has encouraged you to continue to live out your purpose bravely so please remember to like share subscribe and um, send it directly to somebody who needs it because this is really encouraging stuff and I will see y'all next time on the next episode. Bye! Ooh.